College Success Arizona presents Scholar Interviews. The following interview features Eduardo Gallardo Gonzalez, who grew up in Yuma, Arizona. It's a pretty nice city to live in. It's really, really calm. There's a lot of opportunities here, close to my family. I have family on the other side of the border. I like it because it's really, really calm. And where did you go to school in Yuma? I started in Mexico, kindergarten. From there, I went to kindergarten in Atondo, which is in Foothills. It's about 25 minutes away from Yuma. And then from there, we came over here, first grade and second grade. It was in Rancho Viejo. And then from there, I went to Palm Croft Elementary and then went back to Rancho Viejo again. And at the end, I I ended up in uh, Crane Middle School. After that, I went to Cebola High School. You graduated from Cebola? Yes, I graduated from Cebola in 2012. Did you enjoy school? Were you always a hard-working student? And how were your grades? Elementary school, I was a really hard-working student. I have a bunch of certificates and, and uh, awards that they give. Actually, I have a binder full of uh, certificates that I used to always collect. Perfect attendance, honor roll, uh, most likely to succeed. And then once I got to middle school, I started struggling with, uh, with math. I always, I always struggled when I got to Algebra two. And then in high school, I started. In high school, I, I I started missing a lot, a lot of school, and my grades uh, suffered for that. But after after high school, in college, I have nothing but A's and B's. Eduardo, how old are you currently? Where are you attending school, and what course of study? I am currently 21 years old. I'm going to be 22 on March 27th. Uh, I have a, an associate's degree from Arizona Western College and in administration of justice. I am currently attending Northern Arizona University at the Yuma Branch Campus, and I will be graduating this upcoming May with a bachelor in justice studies. A bachelor's degree in justice studies. What type of career are you hoping to work in? Law enforcement, not so much like police, but a federal job like start off as Border Patrol or U.S. Customs to build some experience. Ultimately, my my goal is to be a polygraph examiner, and if not, work uh, at an office uh, handling numerous databases, something for like the DEA or some something of that nature. You see yourself working uh, at the federal justice level, federal law enforcement. Yes. Why does that appeal to you? That's something that has always sparked my interest. At uh, first, I wanted to be a police officer, but then growing up, I noticed that I want to be more like handling databases instead of like I, I really want to be start off as a U.S. as a border patrol agent and secure borders, uh, drive around, make sure everything's safe, make sure nobody's getting here illegally, um, looking for terrorism, anything that I can help with. When did you first become acquainted or aware of College Success Arizona? I was in I was a senior. And there was this uh, advisor that he would go into classrooms and he would give uh, PowerPoints on different opportunities that colleges were offering. And one of them was Gear Up. And through Gear Up, I learned about College Success Arizona. Has the scholarship helped you to avoid student loans or limit some of the debt that is pretty common to college these days? Yes, the scholarship has helped me out a lot. Um, I, I wouldn't have been able to make it without the scholarship. The scholarship helped me in ways you don't even imagine. It It helped me get my books on time before classes start. Instead of asking for student loans or using my time to apply for other scholarships, the scholarship has just helped me and been there ever since I started going to, to college. College Success Arizona has success advisors who act as mentors to students like yourself. Can you describe the experience and how that has helped you? The mentors and advisors have always been there for me. The one in particular that, that is assigned to me is uh, Matt Sotelo. Matt took the, took the position of my first advisor, and Matt has been there the whole uh, college trip. He has been there with me. He, I have his uh, phone number. I could uh, email him if I have any questions, anything. He helps me He helps me out with anything that I may need. If I have a problem like with my school or if I'm concerned about a certain subject, all I have to do is get a hold of him via email or text or even call him, and he's there to help 
and he comes and meets with me once or twice every semester, and he always checks up on me and keeps me up. He helps keep me uh, very organized. Has college helped you in other ways, possibly making you more confident? College has helped me view the world in a different perspective. College has taught me that there is a lot of opportunities out there, and I have gathered a lot of knowledge that I, would, I wouldn't have been able to gather without, without attending college, and I have met a lot of people that think in very different ways. And before, I used to just have my own perspective, and now I learned that before I do something, I could put myself in other people's shoes and view the same situation in different ways. To students maybe considering college now, Eduardo, what type of advice can you offer them? To go for it, and when I was when I was in that position, I would I would think like, wow, bachelor's degree four years from now, it's a long time. I shouldn't do it. I should just go straight to work. But if you if you look at it, it's only four years, and you could do it even faster than that. And time's gonna pass anyway, so don't doubt yourself. Just go ahead and do it. Were your parents, family members, other people around you growing up, were they encouraging you to attend college to get a bachelor's degree? Yes, my my mom would always help me out if I had to, if like with my job, if I had to miss a day, she would uh, help me pay the bills, or she would like provide me with internet, or she would help me economically so that I wouldn't uh, fall back. If my car was having uh, mechanic problems, she would let me borrow her car. She would reward me if I if I was doing good in school just to help me keep me motivated. And my dad. He has also motivated me verbally. He always keeps me like, like if if one day I felt like, like man, this is way too much. He would he would uh he would he would take me and be like, look, you have to do this because you want to be somebody, somebody in life. You want to be successful. You don't want to you want to break the chain of the family that we have all achieved. You want to you want to surpass everybody else in our family. You have to go and get that college degree. So, yes, they have helped me out a lot. I have a note here that you've worked in your mother's restaurant and you've also worked in the fields in around Yuma? Yes, that's correct. That field work, that's an honest day's work. That's hard work, isn't it? Yes, that is a, that is a really hard work. At the restaurant, I've been working for about a year. My mom has always had a, she's always been into the food uh, industry. She has a, she has a food place right here in Yuma, and she, we had that for about 10 years. She recently expanded the restaurant over there in the foothills, and that has also been going on for a while. But in, our, in the agriculture field, I've been there for about, ever since I was a senior. At first, I wanted to leave school and go work in the field because I work irrigation, and then uh, the people there, they, they put in like about 100 and 20 hours a week because they, you you get to spend the night in the field and irrigate overnight if you want to. And at first I saw that you make a lot of money. I was making maybe like 800 to 900 a week at the time when like I didn't have that much homework and I could actually stay in the, in the field. And at first I wanted to, I was just like, man, I should just drop out of high school and just go work or I don't even need to go to college and just go work in the field. And my dad noticed that and then he... He used to he started working me harder and started started making me do other things and just sit in my car and irrigate and he made me see that it's not easy and that's when I was like no you know what I don't want to do this my, the rest of my life it is pretty hard and he he used to work me hard every day and I know he did it so that I wouldn't be like hey I, w- I want to be here and now and now I really know like I don't want to do this anymore I want that college degree I want to go get that job. After you graduate this year, do you plan on staying in Yuma or do you plan on moving elsewhere? I'm not sure, actually. I, I really want to stay in Yuma. I want to help on my community. I want to, what I have learned and everything, I want to use it here to help other people that, that are struggling to go to college or with my, if I go into law enforcement, I could, I want to uh, make some programs if I could do some changes in the city to help out other people. But if there is nothing to do here in Yuma, uh, work-wise, then I'm going to have to go somewhere else, but I really want to stay in Yuma. Maybe to get experience and maybe a little bit longer uh, along the road, go to work over here in San Diego or, or Phoenix, somewhere else just to see the world. But ultimately, if I don't stay here in Yuma or start off here in Yuma, I really do want to come back.
with more experience to be more of a more, more helpful person here in my community. Thank you, Eduardo, for the interview and for working so hard to make a difference in our community.